Tonight, as the snow continues to fall, the city of Duluth issues its first snow emergency of the season. Plus, the snow may be a headache for drivers, but the snowfall could mean a busy weekend for a local business that caters to snowmobilers. And doctors in Wisconsin are asking students to get vaccinated on their winter break before returning to classes. We'll find out why. From CBS3 Duluth, this is the CBS3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Rob Coles. Kristen and Briggs are off tonight. Thanks for joining us. A full day after a massive snowstorm, Duluth has declared its first snow emergency. Here's what that means for you. You have to move your car off snow emergency routes by 9 o'clock tonight. You can find a map of these routes on our website. Any vehicles not moved by then will either be ticketed or towed. The, last, uh, the snow emergency lasts until 6 tomorrow night. Now, the city is facing some big questions tonight, why they waited so long to call a snow emergency, especially, especially with some spots in Duluth seeing 11 inches yesterday and knowing even more snow would fall today. CBS 3's Quinn Gorham joins us live now. Now, Quinn, you heard from city leaders today who defended their decision. What do they have to say? Well, Rob, as you can tell, the snow is falling on me right now, but the real story is in the ground below me right here. If you take a look down here, this area right here is where a car was not even 10 minutes ago. This car had to swivel and swerve to make its way out of this area and also had to be shoveled out. And that's the story with a lot of cars. Take a look at the cars behind me over here uh, in a line. This one right here is actually snowed in still. The owner of that car is going to need to move it by 9 p.m. tonight in order to avoid getting ticketed or towed. Now, the city, from their perspective, why they decided to do this now was because these narrow roadways from these plowed in cars were creating problems for emergency vehicles. But that decision hasn't been met without a bit of controversy. As you mentioned, the big question today has been why wait so long to call the emergency when narrow winter roads have been a problem for the city before? Well, city administrator Noah Shuckman says the city does doesn't have a specific amount of snow that triggers an emergency, so it's always on a case-by-case -case basis. In this case, he says the team evaluated the snow and the timing throughout the day yesterday. They thought they had enough staff to keep up with it, but he says today they understood the impact of the additional snow that's falling right now. Shuckman added they also don't want to be trigger happy because they know the impact a snow emergency can have on people. Asking people to move their vehicles often in very dense part of the city. Um, or, or potentially be ticketed or towed is not something that we do lightly. It can have a great impact on people. And so when in doubt, we would like to make sure that we are not disproportionately impacting people unnecessarily. However, it's unclear what exactly was in doubt. For days, the forecast called for the amount of snow that ultimately ended up falling. Another reason they called a snow emergency now was many of the plows had moved on to clearing residential streets. Now, while they were they were still backtracking to maintain those routes, and with this snow falling now, the city realized it would only make those main routes more narrow if they didn't call a snow emergency so they could make a full pass through. Speaking of those residential areas, about 50 to 60 percent of them right now have been plowed. Now, those won't be impacted by the snow emergency because with this new snow, they'd still go through their plow priority list, which starts with the busiest snow emergency routes. Right now, Quinn, who is ultimately responsible for calling a snow emergency? Well, Rob, at the end of the day, that comes down to the city's public works director. Right now, that's Greg Guerrero, who's filling in for Jim Brenning, uh, Benning. Sorry, Benning is on military leave right now, and the public works directors also consult with other city administrators in council to make that decision. All right, thanks, Quinn. Now, again, you have to have your vehicle off snow emergency routes by 9 o'clock tonight. We have a map on our website, uh, cbs3duluth.com. And Dave joins us for a quick look at the weather. Dave? Snow. <laughs> Round two. Round we got two. a lot yesterday, really comparatively just a little tonight, but it's already slipping up the roadways. So that's why we're looking at the situation we are. 
What kind of situation does the rest of the region face outside of the Twin Ports? Well, let's start up north and work around the region. Winter storm warning, that's in effect till midnight tonight for Kuchiching County and northern Itasca County. Three to six inches of snow possible there. There's also a winter storm warning from two harbors up towards Grand Portage along the North Shore. That's till four o'clock in the morning, three to six inches possible there. The counties in blue that cover much of the rest of the area, winter weather advisory till midnight tonight, one to three inches of slippery snow. Then a wind chill advisory comes in after midnight and lasts through tomorrow morning because on the heels of this low pressure system, the Arctic air is coming to call. Right now, we're still getting a little bit of light snow, indeed, around the region, but persistent light snow, so it should add up to those totals by about midnight tonight, and then start to evacuate the region, allow Arctic high pressure to take over to clear up our sky and knock down our temperatures. So tonight, there's a 90% chance for this snow. Low temp around the Twin Ports will be zero, but it will be colder inland, below zero, 10 to 15 below, perhaps, for some towns well into Minnesota. We rise up to 10 above for Wednesday with a mostly sunny sky brought in by the higher pressure. But boy, once we get into the weekend, temperatures could go towards 20 below even in the Twin Ports. And we'll talk about how long that's going to last coming up in a few more minutes. All right, thanks, Dave. Well, much of the Northland is blanketed by fresh snow. That's a good thing for snowmobilers and businesses along snowmobile trails. CBS 3's Larissa Millis caught up with riders prepping the trails today and shares why this snowfall didn't come a moment too soon. About 30 miles north of Duluth, a world of winter recreation awaits snowmobilers. I've done a lot of riding over my years and truly do think that we have some world-class riding in, in the northern Minnesota area here. Nick Alexander owns the Pequon Inn, a bar and restaurant located along snowmobile trails. Our location is right off a of main hub of the trails that really allows people to ride anywhere, whether they want to go up to the range from there or up to the North Shore area. Alexander's family took ownership of the Pequon in October and are hoping the recent snowfall brings a boom in business as the start to this winter felt more brown than white something that can have a big impact on sales, estimating that up to 50% of annual spending could be seen over the winter months. It can have a very significant economic impact, and being somebody who's snowmobiled up there a lot, that when you have poor snow seasons, those years are very difficult on the businesses. The trails near the restaurant are frequented by many snowmobilers, including members of the Pequon Area Trailblazers Club, who say they are excited about the fresh snow and the new ownership. Uh, they have some really nice plants here, and I've met them, and they seem like really nice people and are looking forward to supporting our industry. Denise Anderson and other members of the club spent Tuesday preparing the trails for grooming, where they are smoothed out for riders. She says the snowmobile community is one she's proud to be a part of. It's, it's a really friendly community. People always are helping each other out on the trail, helping each other if they break down, helping people with, you know, directions and where to go and where to eat and where to get gas and where to stay. Well, the Pequon Area Trailblazers Club manages more than 60 miles of snowmobile trails throughout the area. To learn more, you can visit our website, cbs3duluth.com. And our winter weather isn't stopping the teardown at Bentleyville. Staff members were out earlier today taking down lights, displays, fencing, and the naughty and nice list. Bentleyville's last night was supposed to be Monday, but organizers decided to cancel because of bad weather. Some staff members say it can be a lot of work, but having a good team has made the job easier. Bentleyville will reopen its doors for next season starting November 19th of 2022. And today, the White House uh, announced it will lift travel restrictions uh, this Friday to southern Africa. This comes one day after the CDC updated its isolation guidance with new guidance for those who test positive for COVID-19 only having to quarantine for five days instead of 10. A new CDC report highlights a small study that suggests the highly contagious Omicron variant has an incubation period of around three days and will cause less severe symptoms in those who previously had COVID-19. You're most infectious a day or two before you get sick and for the first day or two after you've gotten sick. So it's a reasonable approach to keep our economy moving, save lives. The CDC had said the Omicron accounted for over 70% of COVID cases nationwide last week. But today it revised that number down to just under 60%.
And Wisconsin doctors are pushing kids to get vaccinated on their winter break, especially at some school districts like Superior. They plan to return without mask requirements in the new year. The most recent COVID-19 data from the Wisconsin Department of Health shows less than 15% of kids ages 5 to 11 are fully vaccinated in the state. Health experts are hoping Pfizer's recent clinical trial for kids ages 6 months to 5 years old reminds parents that safety is always a top priority. Now, interestingly, none of the children experienced any uh, bad outcomes from the vaccine at all in any of the studies. So again, this is a safe and effective vaccine that's being studied as well or better than any previous vaccine that we've had. Pfizer hopes to get emergency use authorization for this new age group during the first half of 2022. Wisconsin's governor is adding to his long list of pardons. Governor Tony Evers pardoned 30 more people, raising his total to 337. He's now surpassed the number of former Democratic governor Jim Doyle issued over his eight years in office. Evers is three years into his first term. Most of the pardons he granted involved drug offenses. Other offenses included fraud, fleeing an officer, theft, and a home invasion. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, holiday travelers across the nation are feeling the pressure of the Omicron variant firsthand. We'll explain next. Today's high temperature at Duluth International Airport, 20 degrees, almost 22. Boy, tomorrow we will be about half of that. That's starting a cool down that could be with us at least for the weekend. Will we break back towards the warmer by Monday? How long will that snow, that deep snow, stick around our region? We'll give you an answer to that coming up after our break. Let A1 Movers help bridge the gap from your old house to your new home. We have the tools for all of your relocating needs. Big or small, we move them all. Whether you're moving across town or across the country, we help get you where you need to go as safely and efficiently as possible. A1 Movers specializes in making hard work easier, saving you time and your back. To schedule your move, call or visit a1movers.org today. Do you suffer from lower back pain while standing or walking? Northland Anesthesia Associates is here to provide you with surgical-free pain relief. With a fellowship trained and board-certified staff, they offer each patient a customized, effective treatment plan. Call today for the relief you deserve. Menards carries a great selection of rich mint water heaters to ensure that you have hot water when you need it. With high-efficiency models and tankless options to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect fit for your family and save on energy costs. Richmond water heaters work hard hard behind the scenes so you can focus on what's important get dependable hot water with richmond's six nine and 12 year gas and electric water heaters available at menards save big money at menards i'm dr dustin lucarelli a general surgeon at st luke's we oftentimes are the ones that are called to deal with appendicitis cholecystitis hernias and even cancers I chose to practice at St. Luke's because it gives me the opportunity to work with some of the newest advancements and technologies. I really enjoy working with the Da Vinci robot and doing minimally invasive surgery. So being a general surgeon allows me the capability to work with my hands and work with patients. And it's something I truly enjoy. Eric Paulson here from Discover Wisconsin. Join me and the rest of the crew every week on this station for all things Wisconsin. Continue the adventure on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and discoverwisconsin.com. And don't forget to subscribe to The Cabin Podcast, available wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. For you to learn something new every evening, every evening we need to write something new. And that's why winning the 2021 Emmy Award for Outstanding Writing makes us smile. The CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell. My father is one of the best surgeons in the country. Uh, the board asked me to step in as chief. Get me the pee pads. I need to shop her out of it. Sam was given this job because she was the best. Not compared to me. It's too late. The family needs to start saying goodbye. I am not giving up on that baby. That baby has a chance because we have you as a leader. Sophia Bush is Good Sam. Premieres Wednesday, January 5th on CBS. 
and your news on the go, the CBS3 mobile app. Well, welcome back to the CBS3 News at 6. We've got a live look going for you here from the Mobile Weather Lab out on the roads near Skyline here in the Twin Ports, checking out the road conditions. And because the snow has been coming down a couple of hours now, they're getting snow covered around the region here. So travelers have to exercise caution here tonight, probably through tomorrow morning and beyond. And speaking of that, then here's a look at our latest road conditions. The purples here indicate completely covered roads. That's covering western and northern Minnesota as our system works in from west to east. For the Twin Ports up the North Shore and down to the south of the Duluth area here, uh, we'll call it fair driving conditions, but scattered slippery stretches to watch out for. And that's what the conditions are like in Wisconsin. The snow will overtake these roads here as well coming up tonight. And so I think everyone's going to get purple roads, at least on the Y dot and Min dot maps that they put out. One exception, though, will be over towards the snow belt. This time, those folks are off the hook for snow. And you can see roads in that neck of the wood are still in good driving conditions. So turnabout is fair play once in a while. Well, let's turn about and take a look now and some current conditions from Duluth International Airport before we get into the meat of the forecast here. And the current conditions say it's a mostly cloudy sky with an east wind at 11 miles per hour. Relative humidity, that is 89%. Wind chill factor, yeah, that 11 mile per hour wind is making it feel like eight above out there. But it could go below zero overnight tonight, and that's why we're looking at a wind chill advisory to kick in around the midnight hour when we shake off our snow chance. Yeah, this stuff should end around midnight, then we'll get clearer and colder. So temperatures right now aren't so bad. 15 International Falls, 20 for Hibbing Chisholm, 18 Cloquet and Carlton, 21 up the Gunflint, and warm even up the Gunflint right now. 20 in Duluth, 18 Moose Lake, 21 Solon Springs, and 24 degrees in La Pointe, low 20s also for the Upper Peninsula. Low temps though tonight after midnight are going to plunge when cooler air comes in behind our departing storm system here and we'll go below zero inland Minnesota. Maybe even a couple towns in Wisconsin as well. Others closer to the lake will be in the single digits above zero. Well here's the latest on that snow and it's not particularly heavy but it could be particularly persistent until the midnight hour and that's why we're looking at snow totals to to get up there just a little bit. It'll only be like a third of what we got yesterday, but still on top of what we got yesterday, that's what's knocking down the road conditions. So this low pressure system is down to the south of our region, reaching up into the area and not directly clobbering us. And that's why the snow totals are down just a little bit. And then after midnight, Arctic high pressure from Canada comes in to clear us up and cool us down and chase away the snow. So how much snow when the chase begins? I think up north in Kuchichin County and maybe parts of Itasca County, we could go about three to even six inches. Much of the rest of the region is looking at about one to three, although up the North Shore there's a band that could go towards three to six as well. Then we follow that up tomorrow afternoon with a clearing sky, thanks to the high pressure settling in with the chillier temperatures indeed. Once we get into Thursday, there's another small load that could come around, increase the clouds, and bring a 40% chance for light snow, giving way then to a dry period that begins Friday and lasts through the weekend. Dry and cold. We'll show you how cold now with the extended forecast. Tonight, Minnesota could go to 15 below towards International Falls, 5 above by the lake. 90% chance for more snow till midnight. 70% shot for more in Wisconsin and Michigan till midnight. Low temps there, 5 below in Superior to 9 above in Ironwood. Tomorrow, cooler temps indeed. Mostly sunny, yes, but only 10 to 15 or 16 or so for our friends in Wisconsin and Michigan. And Minnesota numbers, International Falls may only top out at zero. Park Point and Duluth, 15 is possible. Now eyeing up the extended forecast for the weekend, it gets pretty chilly. Low temps go 15 to 20 below, even here in the Twin Ports with high zero to five and sunshine, but cold sunshine. After Thursday's snow chance, then that could be the last one we get for the rest of the week. All right, thanks, Dave. Well, travel agents are weighing in on thousands of flight cancellations that disrupted holiday travel. More than 10,000 flights were canceled or delayed over the weekend, around 100 of those at the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. Major airlines say the Omicron variant, staffing shortages, and winter weather are to blame. Experts at Emerald Travel and Cruises say cancellations shouldn't deter you from planning a trip. They recommend downloading your airline's mobile app to receive instant notifications about your flight status. And 
Duncan is here. Duncan, what is happening next in sports? Well, we got some hockey. The UMD men hockey team prepare for a big matchup with number one ranked Minnesota State. Plus, it is holiday tournament time on the hardwood with multiple teams in the area in action. Stay connected to live local CBS3. Check out our exclusive content on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as our mobile app, and join the conversation on today's big stories. If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Calling all Bulldogs. Do you consider yourself a diehard UMD Bulldog fan? Send a picture of you or you and your crew all decked out in your Bulldog attire for a chance to be the My9 Sports Bulldog Fan of the Week. Follow the My9 Sports Facebook page and post your pictures there to be entered into our weekly random drawings. Each fan of the week will be showcased in our My9 Sports UMD Athletics broadcast of the week. The My9 Sports Bulldog Fan of the Week is brought to you by the Duluth Tap Exchange. When news breaks, be the first to know with CBS3. Alerting you with our mobile app, taking you live to the scene. Bringing you complete coverage on air. Inside the deck. Showing you what's happening now, what's next, how it affects you. Focused on urgency. Focused on accuracy. When news breaks in your neighborhood, be the first to know. With live, local, CBS3. Heart attacks and strokes happen, even in the midst of COVID-19. And at least one will occur while you're watching this. Heart attacks and strokes are medical emergencies. If you experience symptoms of a heart attack or stroke, do not delay seeking care. Call 911 immediately. Hospitals are prepared and can safely treat you. Visit cdc.gov slash coronavirus to learn more. School visits are an important part of kind of being a uh, part of the community outside of the TV station here. When I was in sixth grade, that's when I learned meteorology was it for me. Being on the other side of that now, for me being able to kind of pursue that, it's important for me to then be able to get back into the community. If I can go into a classroom and get just one person who was interested or just one person who, you know, leaves there knowing like, wow, I learned something new today. For me, I did my job and that means a lot to me. Watch meteorologist Caitlin Moffitt weekdays at 5 a.m. Something happened to me that day. I've never heard or felt anything like it. I found the girl. Her powers are beginning to manifest. We can use her. Superheroes aren't real, right? But what if they are? What's happening? I need answers. We need to get you ready. Stay back! There's something I need to tell you. Naomi. New series Tuesday, January 11th. Only on The CW. I remember my son was going to grow up without a father. I didn't think someone at 23 could be diagnosed with breast cancer. I was probably the healthiest I had been in my life. Early detection of a melanoma saved my life. I survived testicular cancer because of early detection. I survived cancer not once but twice because of early detection. During the pandemic, you may have delayed or canceled routine cancer screenings. It's time to get those appointments back on the books. Early detection saves lives. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters in this station. Get your news on the go. The CBS3 mobile app. It's been a few weeks, but the UMD men's hockey team is back from their holiday break and ready to roll for the second half of their season. What better way to get back into the action than a home-and-home -home series with top-ranked Minnesota State? It's a big series for obvious reasons. Number one versus number six. It's the last non-conference series of the season for UMD as they look to solidify their pairwise position. And then, of course, the family matchup between UMD head coach Scott Sandlin and his son Ryan, who is a forward for the Mavericks and having his best statistical season with a team-high 12 goals. It was good to kind of get the first one out of the way a couple years ago. Um, I didn't like how the results uh, ended up that weekend. Um, and so I, I've heard about it from him a little bit. But, uh, yeah, it's cool. I mean, I, I mean, you know, he's, he's worked hard to get where he's at. And after the game, we'll either be uh, beaking each other or uh, 
you know, just having the dad son moment like we did uh, last time, you know, like when we played here at the end of the game, I gave him a hug. You know, thought he played good. And hopefully, hopefully it'll be with us winning games, not uh, not losing games. UMD will be without two of their young stars, defenseman Wyatt Kaiser and forward Dominic James, who are away at World Juniors competing with Team USA. Also on the horizon is the Olympics, which will be without NHL players this year, which means there is the potential for college players to be chosen for the roster. I have mixed feelings about it, I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, just given... Not that not about the playing for your country in the Olympics. It's just the same situation with with the COVID, and maybe the, some of the same reasons some of the NHL guys had, you know, their doubts about going over there. You're not going to deny kids that opportunity, but I think you got to look at the the long term results too. If something goes wrong over there, or they get it, and they might miss more than just the the time that they're over there playing games. That hesitancy comes from China's policy. If an athlete tests positive for COVID-19 in the Olympic Village, they would be subject to quarantine period of five weeks, which was one of the NHL's major concerns when they pulled out of the Olympics. Sandlin also added that he has not yet heard anything from USA Hockey about any Bulldogs potentially being selected. To the hardwood for the 41st Coaches Classic at Esco High School, starting with Cherry battling Hermantown in girls' hoops. Cherry, they're sitting at 3-1 and one on the year. The Hawks, they're at 2-5. and five. We're jumping to the second half with Hermantown in control and adding to their lead. Nice ball movement to Liv Berkland for the trifecta. 63-42 Hawks. Cherry starts to fight their way back. McKenna Ridge with the theft and finding an open Riley Mancina for the easy deuce. Lead cut to 63-46, but the Hawks had all the juice in this one. Blake Biondi's sister, Kellen, dropping dimes to Jessica Kakowski for the J. As Hermantown, they take this one by a final of 68-50. to In the other semifinal, it's the host, Esco. Eskimos hosting Columbia Heights. Strong start for Esco. Ayla Gable with the feed to Avery Kuklinski, who is nothing but nylon for, from distance. 3-2 to two Eskimos. The bombs continue to fly in the igloo. Jaden Karpinen spotting up from NBA range. It's straight cash. 8-7 to seven Esco. And how about the mighty Kuklinski, the junior heading in the land of the trees, making it look easy with the finger roll. 21-16 to 16 Esco as Esco dominates by a final of 89-27. to 27. They'll take on Hermantown in the final tomorrow. Great day of hoops. We'll have some more hoops and some hockey tonight as well. Oh, great. Thanks, Duncan. Yeah, Dave, how is the rest of the night looking weather-wise? Well, snow till midnight. Then the cold takes over. And until then, we have plenty of alerts to talk about. So we take one last look at those coming up here. We've got straight-up winter storm warnings for northern Minnesota near International Falls and along the North Shore till midnight and 4 a.m., 3 to 6 inches snow possible there. The rest of us, covered by a winter weather advisory, could get 1 to 3 inches. Then to western Minnesota we go after we start to clear after midnight, then a wind chill advisory kicks in. It's going to get cold for a couple of days. So the snow here, just bear with it for a couple more hours and it'll migrate up towards the north and towards the east. What will follow that? Well, let's get into the short-term forecast here at least. We are looking for temperatures tonight, indeed after midnight, to start going towards the Arctic side as high pressure from the north takes over. For example, here in Duluth and Superior, we should drop to about zero, but it could go to 15 below for International Falls and maybe nine above for Ironwood, so quite a range. But then tomorrow becomes more uniform, sunny and chilly, and could stay that way despite a slight chance for light snow on Thursday all the way through the weekend. All right, thanks Dave, and thank you all for joining us. Feel free to tune back in at 10 o'clock tonight.